afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Doug Paget Radio Show on AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota. And we're joined in the studio with our guest host, Carla Barnhill. And we have a special guest on the phone coming up here, right? We do. Yes. He's one of my favorite people. Is he? He's in the top five. Yeah. Top five? Yep. I, I just moved you into my top ten. So. Oh, oh, thanks, honey. Yep, I did. We are going to talk about education with Jim Barnhill, Minneapolis Public School teacher, recording secretary for the Minneapolis Federation of Teachers, just returned from a huge union hoo-ha out in Boston. Hey, mm-hmm. hey, 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 James. Yes, sir. Hey, bro, you need to turn your radio down, okay? My radio? Yeah, yeah. we got feedback. I, well, I'm not sure why you have feedback because I don't have a radio on. Hold on a second. Are you mocking me, Jim? I, yeah, I, I don't have any radio on. Okay. We we'll can just so hear the back chat. We'll roll with it. We'll take it. Welcome, Jimmy. Okay. Well, well, thank you. Are you in the bathroom? That's where I usually do my call-ins from I the bathroom. I am. You know what? Maybe, maybe the volume on my phone is messing things up, so let me try that, okay? Hold okay. on. Well, we're going to talk to Jim today because there is a, there's a bill in the Minneapolis legislature right now that is uh, seeking to remake education in some pretty significant ways. And mm-hmm. uh, this being Progressive Talk Radio, we want to talk a little bit about what that bill is about, what's at stake for Minneapolis and, and Minnesota schools, and what we should maybe be doing about it, if anything. Okay, well, let, so let let's me hear first it. start off, Carla, let me first start off by saying I'm all a fluster right now <laughs> for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, a couple of minutes ago, uh, when you came back from commercial break, Rush was on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you guys played Rush, and yeah. I don't know if that was in honor of me or what, but it just, it's thrown me off kilter. You yes. had to go and find some Rush all, and listen to it, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. And second, well, it's, it's in my head now, but sure. secondly, the dog really, her ears perked up quite a bit when you had your, come on, gri- you uh, give me a break. You want to start talking about her? She was quite concerned, mm-hmm. quite concerned. <laughs> was she concerned that she was being compared to lustful men? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And and that she was, it was insinuated that she's not very intelligent. Well. <laughs> um, and I do want you to know that It's not the first time food. I've made that insinuation. No, it's not that she's she not also, smart, she has just no self-control. No. She has also eaten the cat food mm-hmm. and since that time. That's so. exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Men, so. do you want to be known as someone who will eat the cat food because you no. can't control yourself? Exactly. No. Is I that a euphemism for something? That. No, you're better than that. <laughs> yeah, and I'd also, I need to lock myself in a room without planes or children or rocks right now mm-hmm. because I'll get distracted. Mm-hmm. So let me let me talk about what you just <laughs> so mentioned So let's talk here. about ADHD the in the public schools. <laughs> right. All right, let's talk. What's the, well, what is I, this bill? I, there's so many... W- there's such little time and so many ways to approach this, so I'm not going to approach this from a policy wonk position. Oh. I'm going to try to approach this from a social justice uh, position because I'm very concerned that things are happening right now in the state and house that the average Minnesotan is just completely unaware of, and that's how things happen in local politics. You wake, you, you know, you go to bed and things are one way, and you wake up the next day and you find that things have completely changed. And you don't know how that change came about, and you are thinking, why didn't I know about this? And then it's too late. And that's concerning me. Um, so, well, okay, I so, try to so what is the change that's brewing? Well, there's a couple things. First of all, um, it's, if, you, if you do want to take it from a policy wonk position, it's House File 934, House File 934, or Senate File 1030. Okay. So you could look those up, you could Google search these things. And you could find out the radical ways in which the um, Republican-led House and Senate are trying to um, affect things. Uh, They've taken an education finance bill, and they are throwing a whole bunch of things into it, and I think it's the bait and switch. Okay. And I think this is what people need to know about. All right, so what are they throwing in there? Okay, specifically, um, instead of – there have been these funds called integration funds, and these integration funds have been – a part of um, education financing for quite some time. And these integration funds were intended to help students of color um, uh, basically help provide funds uh, to large school districts. We call them cities of the first class, which is Duluth, St. Paul, and Minneapolis. And these, these funds are intended to provide programs that would help increase the access of students of color to different kinds of schools, uh, magnet schools. Um, it, it was really all part of the, you know, let's integrate our school systems because we know research shows that when you have a well-integrated school, 
the whole school does better. Everybody does better. And was, did that kind of grow out of, you know, those lawsuits back in the 80s and 90s that led to kind of the open enrollment programs that we have? Is it all I, I think kind so. of going and back to that? I do. I think so. But in addition to that, it, it was part of the whole desegregation that, that, that began with Mecklenburg versus Charlotte. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, you know, in Charlotte, North Carolina, mm-hmm. with uh, the integration of schools going all the way back to the uh, late 60s and early 70s. Mm-hmm. So the problem here is that they, they have this mantra. We don't want to call it in, uh, integration funds anymore. We're going to call it innovation funds, which mm-hmm. is a nice new way of saying we're going to take away money from cities of the first class and redistribute it to the rest of Minnesota. Okay. So we, Minnesotans are being pitted against one another. And the problem is it's robbing Peter to pay Paul. And, and what they're saying is that we're going to help improve the academic achievement gap for students of color. And we're going to do that by taking money away from them. Right, because we hear a lot about this achievement gap, and it's sort of, I mean, not even just in Minnesota, but across the board in education, it sort of keeps getting thrown out there as this is the crisis that we're in. So it does seem like an odd time to sort of say we're going to take money away from schools where the achievement gap is the biggest reality. And that is exactly the point, and that's why I want to say today to people that this is an issue of social justice. Okay. And the if you go back to the Bassett Helms thing where mm-hmm. you're just sort of driven, we could be led by our basic instincts to be driven for, ooh, there's a pot of money that's now available to me here in outstate Minnesota, or, you know, and we could just say, yes, that's great, but you have to realize the consequences of that. Minneapolis has been losing, I mean, I'm, I'm going to talk about Minneapolis briefly because I'm a part of the system. But Minneapolis has been losing um, untold millions of dollars for the last 10 to 15 years in, in budget cuts. So, and much of that has come from the state level, just re- reductions. We just saw the $20 million budget deficit. Mm-hmm. And now, now the, on top of that, now the state, um, the House file has taken $17 additional million dollars away in integration funding. From Minneapolis. From Minneapolis. We want, uh, in other words, we're going to deliver that money elsewhere, and we are going to improve the achievement gap in doing that when we all know that the largest concentrations of students of color and, uh, and also uh, just concentrations of poverty around mm-hmm. Minneapolis, it, it, it exists in cities of the first class. Right. So that ends the policy wonk part. What I want to say is that it, people, I just feel like, you know, when we think about the civil rights movement, it was very obvious no, it, it wasn't necessarily obvious at the time how faith and, and uh, politics were combined. Mm. People at the time were, str- were struggling with that. In hindsight, we all look back and go, wasn't Dr. Martin Luther King brilliant and right? And so what I wanted to say is that we are in such a time right now where we are being further and further polarized and divided in this country and, and here in Minnesota. We have people claiming that they care about students of color, and, and what, how, how do they show that? They show it by taking away untold millions of dollars. Now, $17 million comes away from Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much of that will come away from Duluth and St. Paul, but it would be the exact same kind of a devastating situation for them as well. So t- tell me this, Jim. What, when those funds are part of the budget, like what sorts of things does that money fund? What are some of the, the initiatives that are benefited with, the, with this money? Well, it used to help uh, bus kids to magnet schools. Okay. And, and St. Paul itself um, is having to, uh, it, they just decided recently we can't do this anymore. We can't have uh, all these magnet schools. We're going to have to reduce that because of the, of the transportation costs and whatnot. But, and, and so that's part of it. It was intended to get kids to schools that would be attractive to them, uh, you know, it's kind and, of opening uh, up so access, maybe. Right. It's, yeah. it's almost a count. It's almost a counter argument to the charter thing. I mean, charters are intended to have a specialty, mm-hmm. and the Republicans are all about sending kids to charters um, in competition. But the same. But when you take money away in integration funds, you're actually reducing the choice that kids have to even go to ch- to magnet schools within their own school district. Okay. You see, so it's yeah. counter. It yeah. runs counter to what uh, they say that they would like to have happen. And what is their justification for sending that money to outstate schools? What do they think it's going to fund <coughs> in those schools that will be so so much better? Well, they say that a kid is a kid is a kid. Uh-huh. And what they're doing is they're ignoring the fact that um, 
that uh, the high concentration of students of color and uh, you know multi international communities and um, they're, so they're ignoring that part and they're saying well we have an increase in kids um, in outstate Minnesota which is true yeah. and, and no one no one is saying that the integration fund doesn't need to be somehow uh, reformed. a little bit yeah yeah but you know I, I tr- truth is I'd like to talk about some other parts of the bill but and, and well, we, got, we got all, a little under three minutes left okay um, well, then, then I guess we need to talk about what people need to do. Yeah, let's talk about what people need to do. What can we do about this, uh, about this <clears> situation? Well, I want to say that first and foremost that people, we have to make our political participation go beyond just who we vote for every two years. I mean, right now, if people will do some research, they can look up House File 934 and, and State File 1030 and read about it. They can, that's the first thing that people can do. Okay, so get yourself informed a little bit. Yes, please, please, please get informed. And secondly, we need, we really do need people, especially people outside of Minneapolis and St. Paul, people of faith. I don't care what your faith is, or even people of, uh, who are who don't consider themselves a part of our community of faith. They need to contact their state senator and house representative because it's the, it's largely folks outside of Minneapolis and St. Paul that need to contact their representatives to mm-hmm. say, you know what, we, we reject this money. We don't even we don't want this money yeah. because you're using it to divide. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's, that's the next thing. People outside of the big cities need to say, we're, we're not about you creating an injustice for our most vulnerable students. Yeah. And what, I mean, what is the fallout, Jim? If I'm somebody living out in Alexandria and I think, what, only good comes to me. I don't really care what happens in Minneapolis. What, what is the fallout if we, uh, how does this impact us beyond the students themselves? How does it impact us as a, as a society? Well, Paul Wellstone had a quote a long time ago. He says, when, when we all do better, we all do better. Hmm. And what I want people to understand from outstate Minnesota is that when, <coughs> to the extent um, that our students in, in the big cities do, are not doing well academically or are struggling, and to the extent that we make that struggle even more difficult, then uh, these people are, they, they are a part of our state. They are us. Mm-hmm. They are Minnesotans. They are United States citizens. And, and when they're struggling, those struggles will continue to have um, a, burden for, a burden for society to the extent that it creates economic hardship for them in the future. When they're struggling um, academically, that's directly related to how they do uh, in the workforce later. And so we have to have a commitment to the whole of Minnesota, even if that means that we have to reject local, you know, local dollars. All right. Well, honey, we are uh, – honey, Jim – we are uh, <laughs> at the end of our time with Mr. Barnhill. May I call you, Jim? Uh, we uh, you appre- appreciate you calling in and talking about this. It is an important issue, and, um, and it does affect all of us. We, we all do better when we all do better. So we are going to come back with our last little bit. Be right on here on Doug Paget Radio. Thank you, Jim Barnhill. Nailed that one. Decisive analysis. It's on Meet the Press <coughs> this Sunday. We invite you to tune in this week for the very best in political right. debate. Exclusive interviews.